Hey Melida. So Merida and I have signed up for a tour because we decided that we've been here for six months, seven months. Maybe it's time to actually figure out what's going on around us. So hopefully the tour guide will be nice about letting me film and we can actually give you stories of what's going on with all these beautiful buildings in Puebla. The tour with Ernie. We're gonna go see the cathedral. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The word actually Zócalo comes from a funny story from Mexico City itself. That in Mexico City, after our independence, there was the idea to create a monument for the independence of Mexico. But they only get to build the Zócalo. The Zócalo is the very basement, like this. Just the very basement of any monument. Okay. So the project never, never actually grow, but people start to say, I see you at the Zócalo, I see you at the Zócalo, I see you at the ah. Zócalo. That became so popular, the word of Zócalo itself, that now every main city of, of Mexico itself, the downtown, it's called Zócalo. Oh, I see. So yes. it's kind of like actually the foundation of the exactly, monument. Of the monument, But exactly. it's also the foundation of the city exactly. now, the center. And something similar happened to Puebla itself. Okay. Why? Because the word Puebla itself, the word Puebla in the 16th century, it's kind of the action of to populate. Oh, uh, okay. So someone from the 16th century actually hear you say in uh, the city of Puebla, they will be like, what? If it's already populated, because it's the action of populate. Uh. But a misconception actually end up being Puebla. The original name of the city was supposed to be actually City of Angels. Yeah. And um, comes from a dream, or that's what the chronic says, a little hard to believe, but comes from a dream from a friar, friar okay. Julian Garces. This guy actually says in the chronics that he went to sleep and he dreamt of the place appointed by some angels. When he woke up, he told to his staff to find the place that the angels has lead to him. But uh, when we start to check the actual history of the of the foundation of the city, actually the guy who was more popular from the construction wasn't Fray Julian Garcés, was uh, Mendoza de Palafox, another fray, who okay. arrived to Mexico in the condition of observer, because some indigenous were actually claiming of the abuse of the conquistadors in here. So uh, Palafox arrived here as an observer, but then he saw the potential of the people um, the work, the labor work of the people, and he organized everything for the foundation of the city of Puebla. Oh, wow. Yes, and actually grew up in around or seven of nine years after the foundation, which was in 15, 15, 15, 20 something. Sorry, I don't remember the exact. Time. That's okay, I'm like that too. <laughs> in the 1500s, we'll go with yes, 50. 1500s, it was in the 1500s. Yes, in the 1500s, but yeah. in seven years grew up so, so big that actually the bishop, Fray Julian Garces, moved from Tlaxcala, where it was the archidiocese. They decided to move the archidiocese in here. And they decided to build the cathedral here in Puebla. You have been in Mexico City. Yeah. You entered to the Cathedral of Mexico it's City. Amazing Do you remember too. the Cathedral of Mexico City? Yeah. It's the same design. Okay. It's basically the same design. It's what we know in the architectural a basilical design. So it's dedicated to two main things, which is the Via Crucis okay. and to the Mother of God himself. So one side is dedicated to the Via Crucis and the other side is dedicated to, to the Virgin Mary and itself. who are the Via Cruces? Where what? Who are the Via Cruces? No, the Via Crucis, all the, the path of Jesus when he was uh, punished, the mysteries, Oh, I the, the how to call it Stations of the Cross. Yes, the Stations Passion of, of the, the Cross. Christ. Yes, okay. the Passion of the Christ. So on the one side is dedicated to the Passion, and the other side is dedicated to the Mary. Gotcha, as far gotcha, as gotcha. I know, it was kind of a competition in the construction of this and the cathedral in Mexico City. But what you can see here is actually that these guys got more money. The towers are taller. became the most important Catholic building in Puebla. For a time, it was the most important Catholic building in Mexico. This is so cool. 
one thing I always hate about this is I don't think there's a camera that's ever been created that can actually show you what it's like to be walking through this. It's so gorgeous. And then, oh my god, up there, there's like a whole other world and scene and stories and beautiful statues and oh my god. I mean, hey, the greed of the church is kind of gross, but I am glad that they make stuff like this. It's beautiful. Okay, so say that again because I just turned the camera on. So this is your favorite building because... It's one of my favorite buildings. This oh, no. one is the Building Maria. Okay. Because it's basically surrounded by neoclassical buildings and Baroque buildings from the 16th and 17th century. But this one is from the 19th century and the style is completely different that we know as eclectic because mixes several styles. As you can see, it has a little bit of Gothic in the towers, but also some Mudejar style, which I yeah. you can see it there. You can the camera into that direction. All that is the Mudejar style, which is the particular of the Mudejar style. As far as I know, according to my investigations, most of the people who arrived here to Puebla were from the south of Castilla. Oh. And that people from the south of Castilla, most of them have some uh, past from the Islamic side. Oh, okay. So all that was bring to here. Interesting. To Puebla. Yes. I've noticed and that. And that style ends up here. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, let's go careful. Like a, an Islamic style in some of the buildings. Yes. And it has some Islamic tradition. We we'll end up arriving right here in here. And a lot of the taco shops are like Arabe. Exactly. Exactly. And you can Arabe see that influence yes. even a little bit in the food. Neoclassical style building. I'm okay. a big fan of uh, pictures, uh, cinematography. I okay. love Back to the Future. And this building reminds me of the tower, the clock tower. Oh yeah, here. totally. I see that. But That's awesome. what I like to point you here is the name. Is the a basic school named Jose Maria La Fragua. Okay. This is important or interesting because this guy was a good friend of Benito Juarez. Okay. And also a supporter of Benito Juarez. Benito Juarez was the president after the reform war in Mexico. He, he was Republic. the president and then Maximilian came and then he is exactly. the one that, that came back. The, exactly. Okay. That was the president. He was the double the double dipper president. Exactly. So this guy, La Fragua, was one of okay. his supporters and he was originally from Puebla. So you get to see one important basic school in Puebla in Mexico in downtown Puebla, named after La Fragua. Okay, so we're walking towards the Lucha Libre arena. The wrestling arena here. In so Europa. now this wasn't the first one. The first one is from Mexico City, right? Exactly. The tradition of the wrestling it's from Mexico City. Cut and action. Oh, that was nice. Guy was letting me know Merida was mixed up. Okay. So I was telling you that the. This sport tradition of the wrestling is very important in Mexico and Puebla itself has its own arena, which is still working. Of course, it's closed now, but it's still working. We still have some wrestling events in here. And as you can see, it's very close from downtown. Yeah. Which means that it's a crowded place when these events happen. This is the entrance. Ooh. I got some legends like the Last Warrior, Ultimo Guerrero. Caristico, Negro Casas. Negro Casas is a classical. I only know like, uh, what is it, like red themes? The old 50s. I don't know any of them. <laughs> I'm terrible with this. I yeah, think well, it's fun to watch, but I don't know anything. We have some legends, for example. One of these is from the family of uh, Ultimo Guerrero, Negro Casas. Negro Casas is a whole legend. Negro Casas is a guy. I, I think it's almost 60 years, or he's around 60, and he's still fighting, and he's still being one of the best matches. Negro really? Casas. Yes, I love to 60 watch years Negro old Casas. and yes. still going. All right. Sorry, there is no picture of him here. There is Rey Mysterio, of course. He's very well known in the WWE. Okay. And this guy, I think that it's family of the Negro Casas and these guys. Caristico, 
Flyer Jr. I think that is one of these. Flyer Jr. is a guy who actually likes to jump and fly a lot. Okay. So one of the traditions or one of the good things of the Mexican wrestling is actually that. The flying, the jumping, all the show that comes along. So I deeply recommend it to see Mexican wrestling. Well, I want to see it. I don't understand it, but I want to see it. Yeah, this, looks so, this is the entrance? Yes, this is the entrance. This is so yes. tiny. Oh, yes. But then it's a huge arena, right? Yeah. Oh my, so all of this is oh, the... This is the... This is the taquilla, sorry. This is the entrance. Oh, okay. The oh, that's where you get your basically ticket. similar to the, okay, to this the one in Mexico sense. City. Okay. That's the entrance. Wow, okay. You got it? Yeah, I think they should have just taken bullfighting rings and turned them into, into these. Now that you mentioned full bullfighting, you're going to interest one part that we're going to see. We're going to see go it? Alright, let's go back. Okay. So this is the square of the frog. You can see the flea market in here of antiques. Okay. Mostly antiques. You can find basically anything, of course. Yeah. But the most important or the most interesting is actually to visit the flea market that comes from this area. Because you can find basically anything you can imagine. These are um, for miracles. Yeah. If you get a miracle, you can have, kind of have the obligation to make a drawing about the miracle and thank him to the, to the saint in there. Oh, okay. I know that they're like traditional here and Frida yes. likes to do them. In, uh, yes, Frida used to make a lot of them. So yeah. she gave things, she created this retablo to thank to San Pancracio to save him after she got a lot of DC after, after she this. fell off the carousel. Yes, the oh, carousel. I love that I understand <laughs> it now. fabric <laughs> And they actually sell pieces of the origin denomination with the BO4. Oh really? Okay. Not everyone sells. You can actually take the piece, see it underneath. But some of these you can actually pick them and see the BO4. Okay. Long story short about the Talavera. It was inspired or brought to Mexico by the Spaniards from this place of Talavera de la Reina, which is a place in Spain. Okay. That area. So in that place they make this, these particular tales. So when those techniques arrive to Mexico and they meet the indigenous handwork and the mud of here, the local mud, it was discovered that the best Talavera tale or the best Talavera was created here. So suddenly became a very popular Talavera for covering first the, the buildings uh -huh. and then you can find uh, vessels, you can find uh, This is the Parian. As far as I know, the word is a Filipino word that means actually market. Okay. This area actually was created specifically for this for the art craft creators can have a place to bring their art and sell it to the people. Wow, the tin signs are getting kind of risque. Oh yes. 